you, everybody, and welcome to the Grassroots Radio Conference in Portland this year. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Becky Myers, and for now, I'm the development director at KBU Community Radio and co-chair of the GRC. And uh, thank you. <laughs> And I will be starting as the new GM at KCAW in Sitka, Alaska next Monday. <laughs> so it is an immense pleasure to work with Betty, with all the volunteers, with the, the center to bring this and um, put this on this year. But um, thank you all for being here. I have some housekeeping. So we have started a Lost and Found. For your errant things, they will be over by, or actually directly at registration, not nearby. Just go talk to registration and they can help you out with your stuff. Um, we have open houses tomorrow where you can see two of the really cool Portland indie community radio stations, um, KWU Community Radio, which is in Southeast Portland, and Freeform Portland, which is in Northeast Portland. Uh, there's details and addresses in your program guides. Please join us. I hear there may be rumors of libations, but you know, you'll have to go to KWU to see if that's true. So. <laughs> So then raffle stuff. We have the immense fortune to have yet another raffle prize come up. It is a pair of Audio-Technica headphones. So please stop by registration and take part of the raffle. We also have a Tascam field recorder, a dielectric antenna, and then the illustrious GRC quilt, which is proudly displayed in the hall where the classrooms are between 160 and 170, so check it out. You get to hold on to it for one year and have immense bragging rights, if that is your jam. It, it may be, so no, no judgment. Um, so I have other things. We are selling books. Sex and Broadcasting and Radio Papers, done by um, Lorenzo Milam, as you may already know, and Nuts and Bolts by Wade Rathke, so stop by registration. Basically, registration's the place to be. If you want to go to Stonehenge and see one of the coolest towers ever, um, you will need to sign up at registration. If you have a car and are willing to go up to a cool tower and hang out, then please sign up your car and your driving because it probably won't go anywhere without you. Okay. Check program insert for changes. Ah yes, training, training, training tomorrow is back on. Please keep an eye out for an announcement as to where. We are figuring that out, but that will be at 1.45. Um, and again, thank you volunteers, thank you Native American Student and Community Center. Without you, it, this is not possible. We're almost there, folks, I promise. So um, audio from everything will be posted on the grassrootsradioconference.org website at some point. Um, there will also be video of this event and um, the earlier event on the metroeast.peg.tv website. So keep an eye out and take a look at that. And I am now getting to the... The, the, the point of me being up here. You don't want to waste my time, or my, your time with me is what I mean. I would like to introduce Metro East, a wonderful community partner here in Portland, Oregon, who um, they are a full service media network. They have six channels with full service coverage of public educational and government access programs serving over 400,000 cable households across all of the greater Portland area. And uh, Marty Jones is amazing. So I'm going to let him speak. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. You have to love a daze that already comes with reading glasses. That's really cool. I'm going to use my progressives here. Thank you very, very much. Um, in honor of our special keynote who, who grew up in South Carolina, I once heard a preacher in South Carolina say, blessed are the brief, for they shall be invited back. So, <laughs> so I'm going to be very brief because you guys are really cool and I'd like to come back. Uh, we made up a hashtag, I can't help it, old marketing guy. So hashtag GRC 2018. 
right? So we made that up. That was with, with Becky's approval. She made it up. Uh, but I want to say a big thank you to Becky Myers, to uh, Betty McCardle, and Sabrina Roach for extending this invitation to me and my team. My producers extraordinaire here, John Lugton, our head of production, Tony and Keith, Tony Evans, Keith Thomas. So we give them a round of applause. They've been working really hard. But on to more important things uh, while you're here. Our guest this evening is, dedicated, is a dedicated and valiant public servant. Uh, consumer advocate and champion of community media. The impression she has made on others is what struck me most poignantly when preparing this introduction. So I have some quotes to share with you. Quote, Mignon Clyburn will go down in history as one of the best FCC commissioners of all time. Former FCC official, yeah. And consumer advocate, advocate uh, Gigi San said, for, quote, nearly nine years, she has been a vocal and passionate advocate for the public interest and defender of the most vulnerable in our society, end quote. Clyburn advocated for expansions of the Lifeline program that helps low-income Americans by telephone and broadband service. Uh, she also has been a leader on lowering prison phone rates and the issues of media ownership and net neutrality. This is a particularly interesting quote. Listen to this one carefully. Quote, she has been a tremendous leader and a committed public servant throughout her time here. As the first woman to head the agency, she led skillfully through a transition and put her stamp on the commission, including through her steadfast leadership in telehealth, media diversity, and digital inclusion. I've enjoyed working with her, and even when we have not seen eye to eye on policy, I have always held her candor and thoughtfulness in the highest regard, said FCC Chair Ajit Pai, of his former colleague. <laughs> gotta bow down, everybody's gotta bow down when somebody's doing good stuff, right? Commissioner Clyburn previously spent 11 years on the South Carolina Public Service Commission, the PSC, including two years as its chair, and quote, prior to her service on the PSC, Clyburn was the publisher and general manager of the Coastal Times, a Charleston-based weekly newspaper that focused primarily on issues affecting the African-American community there. She uh, co-owned and operated uh, the family-founded newspaper for 14 years. So she understands grassroots, uh, unlike a lot of people in policy. She has been, uh, according to Senator Ed Markley, Markey, I'm getting mixed up with Merkley, <laughs> uh, Senator Ed Markey, Mignon is a voice for the voiceless, always defending the most vulnerable in our society to ensure they are protected against the special interests. And boy, do we need that protection. I think before she leaves Portland, we're gonna put her back in her old job. <laughs> so the last quote I wanted to share is from uh, Commissioner Jessica Rosenworcel, who said that Clyburn is, quote, a dynamo who worked to put consumers first and bring connectivity to those at greatest risk of being left behind, urban, rural, and everywhere in between. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our most esteemed guest tonight, former FCC Commissioner, Mignon Clyburn. Good evening, everyone. Uh, those of us who are from the South always say that we're the warmest people on the earth. I might, uh, please don't tell them, I might have to disagree uh, tonight for whatever part of the earth you, all of you are from. <laughs> you have been extremely warm and embracing for that and more, uh, I thank you. What a pleasure it is for me to take part in your 2018 community radio conference. Very seldom do policy influencers, past or present, have the opportunity to interact with those of you who unapologetically identify yourselves as radio activists. But honestly, if you truly love this medium, and I do, and the communities that are served by it, there is no other label that truly matters. So my sincere thanks uh, go to all of you, but specifically Becky Myers, Sabrina Roach, Betty McArdle, if I said your name correctly, uh, Marty Jones, for the invitation, for the introduction, for the hospitality shown to this jet lag, a little sol soggy, but never discouraged, former FCC commissioner, 
who recognizes that the agency she truly loves the most, one is that, that is uniquely in a position to, to, to really to do some amazing things, has not often shown a love, love for the platforms you represent. I find that especially troubling because to me, radio is the purest form of media. And as much as we fawn over new and shiny technologies and services and apps, radio is tangible. It is always available. It is present. It informs you in time of crisis, and it spreads the love when you want to celebrate. It never goes out of style. It would never go out of style, no matter what, how many obituaries you will read, you will always be here. And that is especially true and critical when it comes to non-commercial stations, because you represent the sharpest, purest, most reflective areas of the communities that you serve. You go over and beyond to reach and speak for the too often ignored. And that, in this day and time, regardless of how you feel of what's been going on in front and center and what that vote is on tomorrow, these communities need you more today and tomorrow than ever before. Because regardless of how you feel, who you believe, that's secondary right this moment. It is how the communities feel, what they need to say, and the question is, and you've got the answer, what platforms will allow them to say it? Yours will. And they're gonna need you. We're gonna need you more than ever before. Because to me, the only constructive way and means to say what's on our minds, to release whatever frustrations or euphoria that we have at this juncture it is best done over your platforms. Because I think from where I sit, and I don't know if this is a function of age, or I don't know what it is, but the older I get, the more I know and see that the challenges that we have in our society can be pointed, targeted, and, and really, when you zone in on them, they're because we don't listen to each other. We don't use the platforms before us to hear each other. And to do those two, which is really one, it doesn't mean that we will agree with each other. But we need a means and a platform and, and opportunities to understand each other. Because if we are able to do that, then honestly, all the rest of the particulars are secondary. Now, I bring this up in part because I think about who I am and what I am to you. I started out in this media ecosystem as a manager of a small weekly African-American oriented a weekly newspaper in Charleston, South Carolina, as you heard Marty say. Around that time when I got into year two and a half, the owner and manager of WPAL AM radio station, which is no longer formatted in the same way, allowed this not so ready for prime time or any time adult to speak her mind and contribute to the discourse of the day on a certain Saturday afternoon during a live radio segment back in the late, like I said, like the late 80s. Before then, I always listened and appreciated a radio, but on that day, I actually fell in love. That station and that program allowed and enabled someone like me to be my pure self. 
unapologetically my pure self. It wasn't all pretty. It wasn't all coherent. <laughs> but it had allowed me to be me. I didn't have to dress up, apply makeup, or worry about all the other externals. So you know I really fell in love then. <laughs> all I needed were those headphones, even if there was some tape on them. <laughs> A mic even though it looked like it wasn't gonna withstand my interview, and a broadcast signal which offered the ability to reach others often miles away. We addressed key issues in our communities that the other outlets ignored, and we gave listeners the opportunity to call in, agree with us, or challenge us, and challenge us they did. I grew more and more each time I appeared on that program. And what was made clear during those segments is that at its very best, radio through innovative content, awesome programming, when it reaches us in real time, it entertains, it informs, it challenges, it educates, it inspires, it uplifts, it heals, and it makes us more whole. You are here, supported by other members of the grassroots communities because you know what is too painfully true. That too often in the communities in which you serve, not enough civic leaders acknowledge, support, or recognize how essential your platform is, how critical you are to those who are often invisible in plain sight. You have the potential to not only share their stories, allow them to be seen, allow them to be heard, but you have the ability to be the most perfect first informers and even more perfect first enablers. The lonely, the homebound, the overworked, the underpaid, they still want to be informed. The disconnected from what should be ubiquitous broadband enabled platforms at all of our disposals. You are the backstop, the information conduits when those 40 plus million people don't have broadband, the ability to have broadband at home. You're there for the physically, educationally, and information challenge. They need you. They need you now more than ever before. And what we heard today to me was most telling, if you were here at midday. There are too many in our communities that are mislabeled, misunderstood. People made, uh, make assumptions when you walk in the room. You will allow them to be defined properly. That is an awesome responsibility. Your stations meet people where they are, just like a connected community should. You're there to hold their hands when they need it, to guide them to where they desire to be, because alone, most of us are unable to take the necessary steps we need to be full contributors to communi our communities. That is the power of community radio. Like with you, like you, I took a victory lap when the FCC returned more local voices to the airways by, uh, by uh, more fulfilling our obligation to the Local Community Radio Act of 2010. But there are challenges that remain. There are challenges that, you know, if interference issues are not properly dealt with, you know, from some of the translators, I hope I'm not stepping on any toes, but if they're not properly addressed with, we're all at risk. If financial support from franchise fees, if they dry up, then we are all at risk.
And what does it mean? What will it mean for these local voices, these, this programming, these unique opportunities for those of us who don't have a voice? We've got to ask, answer, and challenge those who have the ability to shift those par paradigms. When I listened at lunch today, I, who I thought I was pretty informed about hip hop, I learned a lot today. I really did. When you talk about what you do and what that station pointed out, it did not make assumptions or ignore the youth. It included them in their programming and their makeup. It allowed those who sometimes act out because there's no one interacting with them to be heard. We all listened and learned today. And it reinforced what our values what our objectives and what our potential is. Not everybody in this country is connected to broadband, but they have the capacity to be connected to you. Like, though, some of the technology giants who might be 35 and 40 years old with billion plus dollar uh, funds. Yes, I'm a little jealous, you have one of the most critical characteristics that they often brag about. You're disruptive. You are disruptive. You target in unconventional ways. You're unapologetically sometimes narrow in your programming and objectives. You don't care about what the commercial stations are doing. You're doing what your community needs you to do. And for that and more, I thank you. Now, I want to give us a chance. I don't know if I'm breaking protocols, which I don't really care because, again, this is a non, you know, non-commercial, non-conforming. <laughs> I was told by one person, and if I, if I said it wrong, that we have an opportunity to ask questions. I didn't want to make this a, lo a long speech. I just wanted to reinforce to you that when the FCC doesn't get it all right, when our local officials, when they don't get it all right, <laughs> when the companies uh, that have those franchise agreements, when they don't get it all right, you are there to not only pick us up the pieces, but to remind us of what is right. When we fall short, you are there to hopefully embrace and nurture us, to get us to a better place so that all of the problems we seem to be able to properly enumerate so eloquently enumerate, you not only address them, but you provide the platform for us to discuss how to get over and pass them. You are the ones who challenge and make us not so passive and uh, accepting of what is. You do that every day, and while I not I no longer have a vote at the FCC. For anybody who is willing to listen, I will always say the reason why I came here to see you, to meet you, to be with you, is because I believe in you. Thank you very much.
You're very kind. You're very kind. So, so I uh, don't know if I'm getting the uh, proverbial hook. I think they were walking. So I, I don't know if anybody. <laughs> Yeah, I know there were a couple of people we had the opportunity, and I think it was streamed for those who couldn't get in the room. There were some questions that uh, we weren't able to address. And for that, I'm sorry. Um, those of you who've done a little research on me know I'm a PK, a politician's kid. And politician's kids have a tendency to be a little verbose. So um, uh, we didn't have a lot of time for questions. So I, I just want to, to, um, uh, you know, to give you an opportunity to do that if you care to. Um, I, I know I'm standing between you uh, and libations and um, whatever else that you do on a rainy Friday night. I don't want to know because I, I want to look at you in the way that I see you now and not. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 seriously, if, if um, you know if you wanted to take this opportunity to um, to either make a statement that you couldn't make today or, or ask some questions, uh, I'll be glad to. And, and if you you want to help navigate and. Um, Okay, so to the Bettys. <laughs> I don't know what. Questions for, okay. Wait, did you mind identifying Brenda? Go ahead. Her name is Brenda? Well, I like to think that um, on matters that are critical, um, that um, that I had a, a, a reputation, uh, you know, a, a fighting uh, for uh, those um, who weren't heard, uh, those individuals. Right now, I am uh, taking advantage of a fellowship at the Open Society Foundations, uh, which is based in New York. And, and the thing that we did not do uh, an incredible job uh, handling at the FCC is really bringing just and reasonable and fair rates to inmates and their uh, uh, families when it comes to making um, phone calls. And so that is a project that I'm working with some of the activists um, and those interested on um, who really uh, recognize that true criminal justice reform uh, includes the ability to keep in touch with their loved ones. So that's my primary focus uh, right now. Um, you know, in the next couple of months, I might have to end up because, you know, two mortgages, um, you know, i uh, kidding, <laughs> you know, um, but now I'm doing what, um, you know, what I love and as long as I can afford to do that, um, that will be my single focus. Oh, the other, uh, the FCC, uh, no, no, I, I just realized, the, um, um, uh, I did voluntarily uh, leave, I, 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 and this is no real secret, um, that it got to the point where I thought I would be more effective, uh, a more effective messenger on the outside than in. Um, uh, you, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty tough and can take being on the not winning side, um, uh, but I, I, again, I just felt that, um, I, I would be a better service to my community on the outside because, because of what I just said. <laughs> So that is very interesting because um, uh, that needs to be reasonable too. And then let me make a, a, a quick example. I don't know if you're aware of some of the uh, communities that are allowing for some access, um, but what they're doing, let me back up and say, I love technology. Technology is you know, a neutral platform. Uh, it can, be, can en enable us positively, or hardwire some of our uh, most negative um, uh, characteristics. And this is an example where it's not so rosy. What is happening now in many of those facilities, you can no longer send a letter or a card or pictures in the mail. They're getting rid of that. And they are saying you need to you know, use an, uh, you know, the internet to do so. But they're charging you for each page. And they're not charging you a penny or two or three for each page. Also, when it comes to technology and, and being connected with um, inmates, uh, you know, to uh, keeping in touch with their families, they've got this thing called video uh, call conferencing or calling. Now, that sounds lovely, especially if you live miles away. But if it char if it costs you one fifty or two dollars a minute, and the quality is horrible, then where has technology really taken you? And the 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 predicate behind that 
is where a lot of these facilities have instituted um, this video calling, they are getting rid of in-person visits. So you can live two blocks away from the facility and you, can, and you have to pay to see them from the neck up if you're lucky. If you're five, two and a half for me, like me, it's probably from the nose up because they don't adjust it. So these are the types of things. So it's coming, but at a severe cost and we're still not addressing the issue um, of affordability uh, when it comes to keeping in touch. Other questions? Tomer, you're right. Uh, one of the things that frustrates me, and I actually got to uh, bring the same question to IG5. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons, um, there's many reasons that younger people are not being drawn to, to radio. Um, some of them are technological, maybe most of them are, but one of them is that, it's, that radio has this anachronistic uh, list of words that can't be said that you hear it in every other aspect of society except on broadcast media. And I'm just uh, uh, curious, you know, uh, if, if you think that is ever, that barrier is ever going to break down. Uh, so that, um, if I'm following, and I think I am following what you're saying, that bar has moved um, considerably. I've listened to radio and I've heard some three and four and five letter words during the day. Um, I'm sorry? Examples? <laughs> I'm a lady at least on stage. <laughs> and, and so uh, again, you know, those norms and what we hear and, and what's considered, you know, reasonable, you know, um, you know, that's going to change as we do. I don't know how they answer. Like I said, I'm trying to think, other than the F-bomb, uh, you know, what I, I really don't hear on radio that I don't hear, you know, walking up the street. You know, maybe, you know, you guys are, are, are cleaner, bless you, um, you know, than, than what I'm hearing on commercial radio, but I, I don't know if I'm properly answering your question. I don't see much of a, a societal difference. I will say um, that, um, I don't know if my niece and nephews, you know, and their uh, nieces, the older ones are in their 20s. I've never heard about them listening to radio. So there is a sort of a generational challenge. But on the other side, uh, we all become a, our parents eventually, some of us, uh, you know, uh, sooner than others. And, um, and that's why I know this platform particularly, that same station that I mentioned to you um, in Charleston, that, that AM station, that was the only station on the air during Hurricane Hugo. The only station for miles. Um, that FM signal carried for a hundred something miles. There is always going to be, you're always going to be the communications backstop. It is up to the FCC and those of us who care about, you know, all of you to make sure that you're a financially viable, you know, um, you know, communications uh, backstop. And, and that's a topic for, you know, another series of conversations. Yes, sir. The last one. Last question. I'm sorry. Hey, thank you. Is, is net neutrality on life support and what is its prognosis? Yeah, I should have known I wasn't going to walk out of here without that one being asked. <laughs> will say uh, that um, I'm, I'm troubled at this point. Um, I'm troubled in part because of what uh, was laid down in a lot of the state preemption issues. Um, and, and that is, to me, is significant. Because if that part, you know, it, it, it is, um, is left to stand, not only would, would the net neutrality, you know, principles be compromised, but all of the other planning and infrastructure issues in terms of state and local uh, communities, uh, you know, will will be um, you know not will be disadvantaged. Um, it, this is a battle of the titans. Um, uh, you know, uh, we talked earlier. You know, this is a battle of the owners and users. Um, you know, of, of these platforms. That's what it, it boils down to. And it really depends. Um, it's not going to come down necessarily that who who has the most money. Uh, it, it, it's who can prove their case before a certain a panel of judges. Um, that, uh, and so um, I, I can't predict it um, because I'm a generally positive person. But, but um, I, I tell you, um, 
we're going to have to have a lot of oxygen tanks in, in, in order to sustain ourselves o over the next couple of years. But I'm heartened, I'm, I'm uplifted by California and other states that are challenging the, uh, the FCC that know what their communities need. Um, I, I don't know if that part is going to be upheld, but it's worth the investment. Uh, there is no other platform, and I'll put yours on a, a level playing field with, with the internet and this, there's no other most democratic platform I know. It is the most equalizing and enabling um, you, you know, uh, infrastructure that we have. It meets you where you are. You're hearing the themes in my speech when I'm speaking about you. Um, and for to do anything that will give an advantage to the owners over the users, I find problematic. So if the goal is to make sure that the platforms that we have, particularly that one is enabling, then the proponents of net neutrality rules will win. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you so much. And before we close tonight, uh, Sharon Scott of Art FM WXOX Louisville would like to present its 2018 Art FM Radio Pioneer Award. Sharon, would you please come forward? Hi, everybody. And before I start, someone left their reading glasses up here. Anybody? Yeah, they're there. They're, they're, they're the emergency glasses. <laughs> OK, great. Well, thank you all. And thank you to the organizers of this amazing conference. You guys have done a great job so far, um, and to the center that's hosted us all. Great to see so many familiar faces, so many amazing people doing great things in this community. Again, um, a pleasure to be here, as always. The Art FM Radio Pioneer Award recognizes individuals who transcend and defy traditional uses of radio to discover new possibilities and opportunities in broadcasting. Our first award went to Clyde Clifford, a programmer out of KKAY in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, he pioneered freeform broadcasting. He was one of the pioneers in freeform broadcasting um, back in the early 60s and 70s. Last year, our award went to Mr. Jim Ellinger, who we have the honor of having in the audience. <laughs> Um, Jim has pioneered radio stations across the world, bringing the power of broadcasting to communities in multiple uh, hard-to-reach places, risked his life to bring the power of broadcasting to communities who really needed it and can use it for the service and the well-being of, of each other. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. <laughs> so it's wonderful to be here. I have a feeling there might be other radio pioneer winners in this audience. Again, always an honor to be amongst you all. Through her work on behalf of community media, low power FM, and net neutrality, this year's award recipient has a distinguished history of pioneering opportunities in media for diverse and unheard populations at the highest national level. This year's Art FM Radio Pioneer Award goes to FCC Commissioner Min Young Clyburn. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 